Welcome to Tuesday's Tips and Tools brought to you by the VSU Center for eLearning. Today we will review recommendations based on best practices when implementing Respondus Locktown Browser and Monitor with your BlazeView tests. With the growth of online instruction, we've seen increasing concern about online cheating and academic integrity. To address issues with exam security, many instructors want to implement Respondus Lockdown Browser and Monitor to secure online quizzes and exams. But wait! Please review and consider the following information before adding Respondus tools to your courses. When adding proctoring options, especially Respondus, to your online assessments, be sure to address the following five elements. Purpose, equity, technology, access, and preparation. All five of these pieces are crucial to successful implementation. Purpose. Consider the purpose of your assessments. Are they formative or summative? Are there more authentic assessments that you could use to gauge student performance and offer feedback? Before opting to use a proctored exam, please consider possible alternatives first. The University System of Georgia has recommended the following. Faculty are being strongly encouraged to assess student performance continually using low-stakes tests and assignments rather than relying on a few high-stakes timed exams. Consider the purpose for using Respondus. Are your concerns about cheating, exam sharing, republishing, gatekeeping? Research what Respondus can and can't do before adding it to an exam to make sure that this tool is the best way to address your concerns. Equity. When implementing Respondus, consider if it will be implemented equitably for your students. Respondus Lockdown Browser locks down the testing environment within the LMS on the device on which the exam is being taken. Students with multiple devices or advanced computer skills are continuously finding methods to cheat the browser. Be that as it may, Lockdown Browser does a great job in mitigating cheating on online exams and upholding the integrity of online exams when implemented thoughtfully. Concerns regarding equity come up especially when using Respondus Monitor. Respondus Monitor requires that students have a video camera in their space. Audio is also recorded. Exams are flagged using facial recognition and facial detection. Exams may also be flagged if others enter in the frame, if an internet interruption or reduction in connection quality occurs as well. Instructors can request students to show an ID as part of the pre-check process, but not all students have IDs. And there is also an issue currently with the use of facial detection technology and proctoring for people with darker skin tones. The problem is mostly associated with lighting and can sometimes result in proctoring warnings that indicate a student cannot be detected in the video frame. The problems increased when a video is recorded with an inexpensive webcam using low-quality video drivers. Issues with identifying facial features can be further magnified by a slow internet connection causing the frame rate to be lowered and resulting in less data for analysis. Some instructors opt to set up special access for students unable to use Respondus tools, but this also brings up questions of equitable testing if some students are proctored and others are not. With advanced preparation and communication, alternative proctored exam solutions can ensure equitable testing in this case. In addition to video and technology and secondary device technology questions regarding equity mentioned earlier, instructors need to understand and communicate the technology requirements and support paths for students using Respondus tools. Advanced communication with students about technology requirements is essential. If students do not have the technology required to use Respondus, this early communication and guidance from the instructor will ensure students can locate and acquire necessary technology through VSU. The system requirements and syllabus statements regarding technology are available in the faculty guidelines document discussed later in this video. In addition to meeting system requirements, instructors should also understand and communicate paths to support to students in advance of the exam. Neither the VSU Center for eLearning nor VSU IT department have the resources to troubleshoot Respondus technical problems. When students encounter technical problems with Respondus during an exam, the first step we recommend to resolve it is to close a browser and lockdown browser and restart it. We then recommend students reach out to inform an instructor. Following that, support resources can be found within the lockdown browser program and on the Respondus website 
at support.respondus.com. Respondus has both a knowledge base and a live chat feature to assist students. In addition to technology limitations, examine accessibility needs and accommodations for your students. Although Respondus is accessible for the most part, for example, it works with most Windows and Mac screen readers, there are a few known accessibility issues. It is important to recognize that Lockdown Browser is simply a browser used to take exams within a learning management system. Therefore, some browser-based assistive technology like Kurzweil will not work with Respondus. Students will need to work with the instructor and the access office to find a solution that will still allow an exam or quiz to be proctored and will allow students to use assistive technology such as Kurzweil or Read and Write Gold. Other access issues include making sure your exam settings work with Respondus and accommodate all students. Online tests require a different approach from face-to-face -face tests. Online tests should not be limited to a short time period as you would a synchronous test. Instead, your test should be available to take during a window of at least 12 hours. This accommodates students in different time zones or whose schedules have been disrupted. It is, however, acceptable to make the test timed as long as the students who need special accommodations are considered and the settings do not conflict with the Respondus settings. Given all these conditions, you will still need an alternative assessment strategy for students who cannot meet Respondus requirements. Include this alternative in your assessment plan. Be sure you and your students are prepared in advance for Respondus-enabled assessments. Begin by communicating strategy and expectations to your students. Your first communication should be through your syllabus. A sample statement with linked resources, instructions, and support information is available in the Faculty Guidelines document discussed later in the video. The information can also be shared through the announcement tool. Also, set up an open-ended, repeatable practice quiz for no points for students to check technology and environmental settings prior to their real exams. Make sure to remind students about preparation they will need to do in advance of a Respondus-enabled exam. If they switch machines or need to take an exam in a different location, they will need to run through the practice quiz again. Valdosta State University Academic Affairs and the Center for eLearning developed faculty guidelines and best practices for implementing online proctoring options. To locate these resources, navigate to the Center for eLearning page and click the Teaching Remotely button here. This will open the Teaching Remotely page. From there, scroll down to the Assessing Student Work section and click the link to the Faculty Guidelines document. Please review and apply the information in this document when adding Respondus or other proctoring options to your courses. Please contact the Center for eLearning if we can help you with anything we've covered in this video or for any other assistance as you develop your courses.